On this episode of Extraordinary Women TV. Well, my first guest is here to talk about the importance of philanthropy and giving back to others who need it the most. Joining me in the studio is the Honorable Margaret Norrie McCain, one of Canada's most recognized and respected philanthropists, who for many years has been active helping organizations promote education, music, and the arts. She has received many honors and awards, and today she sits on the boards of both the Canadian Women's Foundation as well as the Canadian Institute for Child Study. Uh, Margaret, it's so nice to have you here. It's such an honor. Thank you. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. Now, you grew up in um, Eastern Canada to, uh, with humble beginnings. Um, mm -hmm. Who influenced you the most uh, in your life uh, growing up? Uh, that it's easy to answer. Absolutely, my mother. Um, she, uh, I, my father died when I was very young, so I really was raised by a single mom uh, who devoted her time and energy to her family until we all were launched, and then she put on her roller skates and moved into uh, community activity. She was very much a feminist before her daughter, and very much a social activist, and when she died, she's been pulling my string ever since to follow in her footsteps, although I didn't plan on it, but there I am. So she was a woman far ahead of her time. She was ahead of her time. And she was the first woman to run for public office in Nova Scotia. She chose two formidable opponents, uh, didn't win, but she left a mark. And then she was a, the first woman appointed to the Canadian Senate. I think she was the fifth woman in Canada to be appointed. And she embraced every cause of minorities and marginalized people, at that time women, uh, Aboriginal children. So she, she was my, was my best friend and inspiration. And a great role model. Yes, indeed. So you yeah. followed her, her, her footsteps. Yes, I, I, I would say I, I, I unintentionally, but that I have fallen into it. Um, I mean, you are well known in Canada for your philanthropy. Um, to what role did your, your mother sort of influence you with, with that desire to, to give back to community? Giving back to community was part of the DNA of our home, our home life. I married a man who was inspired in the same way. His mother was very much like my mother. Community service, giving to the community, um, embracing your community was just part of our DNA. And I have learned since that one of the social determinants of health is to be a healthy person. Giving to your community is not only good for the community, it's good for your own health. To be part of something that's larger than you is, and the rewards in doing so are far greater than anything you give. And you have four children and nine grandchildren. I do, I do. And I think they're all growing into a philanthropic mindset already. Uh, we started when they were very young with my husband who started this. At Christmas time, uh, they receive a gift for themselves, one gift to keep and one gift to give away. And then the only thing they have to tell us is why they chose uh, their, the, the benefactor, uh, beneficiary, uh, and uh, you know the reasons behind it. And that's instilling uh, tremendous values yeah. in them, I would imagine. Well, it does. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it makes them think beyond themselves, and uh, and that's the thing is reaching out beyond yourself and into something that's larger is very, very fulfilling. It's very uh, rewarding. It's bigger than anything that we give. So you have, um, you run your foundation now. It's an integral part of what you do, the, do. the Margaret and, and Wallace Family Foundation, foundation. or just rather the, mm -hmm. the Margaret and Wallace mm -hmm. McCain mm -hmm. Family mm -hmm. Foundation, just to get the correct name. Yes. Um, tell us a little bit about what the foundation does. Well, the, the mission of the foundation is solely, it's very strategic. It's focused solely on early child development. And our uh, overarching goal in Canada today is to, is to build a national universal early child development system, which is available, affordable, accessible, optional, for children from the end of um, parental leave to, the, to school entry. That gap when 
uh, and what we're trying to do is to uh, address one, the needs uh, for children to develop and to, um, to get off to a good start, to give them, to give children what they really need for, for, to, be, to develop fully and completely. And the other is to, is to address the needs of parents today because you know that almost all parents are in the workforce. Almost all mothers are in the workforce. Most children have two working parents. And right now, what's available to them is just a patchwork quilt of quantity and quality. A lot of it not available, some very expensive. So we're trying to fill that gap for two reasons. One, it's putting science into action, addressing what children need, but also what parents need today because they want what's best for their kids. They want something high quality. So that's my goal, and I may never live to see it, but we keep on trying. And so what, to what extent is education important, and especially for uh, young girls? Mm -hmm. Education is important to everybody, mm -hmm. not just to girls, to boys too. Uh, but uh, part of a child's healthy development, what they really need is, is nurturance, tender loving care, nutrition, but they also need stimulation and they need it from the time that they're born. They need stimulation. No, I don't mean that we're talking about putting children behind desks, little ones, but giving them high quality, play with purpose. Stimulation is, we, it's, is a better word than maybe education, but it is you know, stimulating the brain. And children need it at a very young age. So that's one of the things that we're addressing. And what, what, tell us a little bit more about uh, some of the other issues that, that you address. Maybe I could tell you a little bit about, about philanthropy. Um, because our philanthropy is focused in two areas. One is strategic through our foundation. And that is directed solely at early child development and at children under six. Uh, so we're, we don't receive proposals. We invest where we think we can produce something of value and we're working primarily probably Ontario East, although we're moving a little bit into the western provinces by request. The other uh, uh, um, path for, for philanthropy for us is charitable. And uh, even though we are strategic in one area, we still have to address the needs of society today. And now, the Good Snow Minute. So Margaret, um, now's time for my Good to Know Minute, and I know you've got a great success tip. My success tip would be find your passion. Everybody has a passion somewhere in their heart. Find your passion, and then behind your passion you put energy. And the energy includes preparedness, it includes hard work, it, it, but it includes knowledge, learning, a whole bunch of things. But you put that behind your passion and success will come, I guarantee it. Doesn't matter what it is, whether it's cooking, raising kids, or uh, a multitude of things. And that's good to know. And thanks for sharing. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, more on Extraordinary Women TV. So stay with us. And now for more Extraordinary Women. Welcome back to the show. I'm Shannon Skinner and I'm speaking with the Honorable Margaret Nori McCain. How do we get them interested in philanthropy? Because this is a generation that is very focused on, on is very me-centered. Yes, but I think, I really think if, if ch young children are naturally compassionate, Young children have a hard time walking behind somebody who's living on the street who is homeless. They have a hard time seeing other children who are, who are suffering in a hospital. If you take children to sick kids, for example, you'll stimulate philanthropy. You'll still stimulate caring. Um, being with my, one of my granddaughters has given every year to cystic fibrosis because one of her friends suffers from cystic fibrosis. Making people aware of the needs within society. And, I, and, and it's very easy to do that in a school setting. Just take children out to, uh, and as far as culture, introduce them to the ballet and the opera and the symphony. 
but take them to sick kids. Take them to seniors' homes. Seniors would love having half a dozen or a dozen school children, and it makes them aware of another, another s segment of our society and, and what's important to them. So philanthropy is, is uh, more than just really giving money. Very this is much. really, this is about knowledge, resources as well. Real philanthropy is about, about a lot more than writing a check. Mm. It's about becoming engaged. Yes, they want the money, but they really want you more than they want the money. They want the fact that you care. They want, they want your commitment. They want your uh, um, collaboration with other people who are interested in, in this. And they want your network. Uh, most of all, they want your time and your energy. So one of the things that motivates me is a, is a quote by Mother Teresa, because I managed to take on these things that I'll never see come to fruition. And Mother Teresa said, you may feel as if what you do is just a drop in the ocean, but if that drop weren't there, it would be missed. And that motivates me. Now, for many years, you were very much involved with the National Ballet of Canada. I was involved mostly with the school, mm -hmm. which has translated into the, into the ballet company as well. I am int very interested in them. But it's the school that I became involved with. I didn't know a thing about ballet. There's no, not much ballet. Uh, there's one company in Atlantic Canada. So I didn't know much about it. And it was a total learning curve. It's now my favorite arts organization. I love the children. I love their passion. Uh, it's infectious. What's your uh, favorite production? Oh, I always love the Nutcracker, but I, and I'm, more, I'm a traditionalist. But I, last year was at uh, Nijinsky. Oh, oh, that was powerful. So I, I, I love some of the newer productions now. So, Margaret, what's next for you? What are you working on now? For me, I, have, I only plan to continue what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope my body holds out. Uh, I, I work out five times a week. Congratulations, that's fabulous. Good for you. <laughs> that's, that's more than what many of us do. My trainers wanted me to say that today. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. I've got muscles. <laughs> I want you to know I have muscles. No, I do. I work out faithfully and I try to keep my mind active and I just hope they stay together so that I can continue what I do. I want to see this national early child development system for all children and for all parents because we're not only, it isn't only human development. It's also very much a human capital uh, story. It's a big, strong economic story. It's good for Canada. Well, thank you so much, uh, Margaret, for being here today and sharing uh, some of your journey with my viewers. Um, you're very inspiring and a terrific role model, and, uh, and I thank you for your time. It's been my pleasure, Shannon. Thank you. If you would like to be a guest on Extraordinary Women TV, visit our website at ExtraordinaryWomenTV.com. I'd love to hear from you. Follow me on Twitter at Shannon underscore Skinner or on Facebook at Extraordinary Women TV. I'm Shannon Skinner. Join us next time for another episode of Extraordinary Women TV.